You guys know all too well that Dark Souls and Metroid Prime are the best series that I've ever played in gaming. And I've mentioned in the past, but it's no surprise that my history of playing Metroid Prime eventually led me to love Dark Souls that much more. And it's not by chance. But rather, it's because of the unique design and inspiration and the core elements of a Metroid Prime game being found and perfectly executed in Dark Souls. And yes, in this video I'm going to be talking about the Prime games, not so much the 2D Metroids, and I can explain. The Metroid Prime games evolved the Metroid franchise in a number of ways aside from just being 3D adventures and first-person shooters. See, at the time, a majority of Metroid fans never thought the core formula of the game could transfer into a first-person action-focused adventure. Things like the Morph Ball, Screw Attack, and fast-paced combat of Super Metroid caused fans to seriously doubt the potential of what a 3D Metroid could be. They soon learned that all of those things would translate perfectly into the world of Metroid Prime. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. It's the core formula that was adapted into a new dimension, the formula of exploration, evolution, and entwining, that we would eventually see perfect in Dark Souls. Most people that play video games are familiar with the term Metroidvania, and they typically come as 2D side-scrollers based off of the core foundation of Super Metroid and Castlevania Symphony of the Night. But in order for a game to be considered a Metroidvania, a few things have to happen. The player needs to be faced with a world of hostilities, uncertainty, and insurmountable obstacles that you must find abilities to overcome later in the game. Now, numerous games have taken these ideas and transformed them into their own worlds and games, but I feel much of what makes Metroid unique fails to be found in the majority of these Metroidvanias. However, the game I did find these unique traits in was Dark Souls. A few things that the majority of indie Metroidvanias fail to capture is a world of unknowns and isolation. They tend to lack these harsh, foreboding environments that tell their own stories, and a lot of them forget to have that lack of guidance in the giant, bombastic boss fights. And by now, you can probably tell where I'm going with this. When I started playing these games, I noticed the similarities right off the bat. When you start a Metroid Prime game, you're only given an overarching objective. For example, find these missing soldiers whose signals went dark on an unknown planet. And the same is true for Dark Souls. Ring these two bells of awakening, and something happens. But as we soon find out, the goal that we begin chasing after is anything but. Now aside from this, the player is provided no guidance whatsoever. Or so we think. In Dark Souls, the player is naturally corralled into the proper path, and a number of factors achieve this. There are overly tough enemies on one side, locked doors on another, a foreboding darkness in one, and then on the final path is a number of enemies that the player can adequately handle at the starting level. And this causes them to choose the path of least resistance and head up to the undead bird. In a Metroid game, this is done a little bit differently. The player starts the game with little to no abilities, and as they scour the world, they'll find different colored doors, a path they can't quite reach, or a blocked path that requires them to do something else. And in that same way as Dark Souls, the player is naturally corralled into the right path, but it does an excellent job at retaining that sense of freedom and natural exploration. If we think about how this translates into the Souls games, we discover a similarity that isn't so apparent at first. Just as we evolve in the Metroid Prime games through abilities, we also evolve in Dark Souls. The evolution of the player in Dark Souls seems to come from leveling up at first, but even with a very high level, the player themselves must also learn the mechanics of the game and adapt in order to progress. Take for instance the Catacombs. A new player would never venture into the Catacombs before first going to the Undead Bird, and if they do, they'll soon learn they lack the ability to defeat the enemies and eventually find a new route where the enemies suit their current skill level. But after journeying through the game for a while, an experienced version of that player will come back and learn that they now have the ability to handle the obstacles of the catacombs and explore a whole new area. This element of progressional backtracking was pioneered by the Metroid games and perfected in Metroid Prime. In the Prime games, backtracking after a while of gaining new abilities and skill is the primary means of progressing through the game. For example, after starting the game, the player might explore for a while and come across across strange doors that they lack the ability to open. Hours later, they'll gain a new type of missile or weapon and learn that they can now open that type of door in a manner that creates a thought of, aha, now we can go back there and explore further. It's these aspects of the games that create an addicting sense of exploration. The next similarity between the two is a world of isolation. Everything in Dark Souls wants to kill you, and simultaneously, everything in Metroid wants to kill you as well. As we journey through these worlds, we quickly learn that there is no one coming to help us. No one is coming to tell us where to go and safety is not guaranteed. And this creates a deep feeling of isolation and dread. In Dark Souls, our bonfires are our only safe havens that we go back to when we die. All of the enemies respawn and we must run the entire path again. This aspect can also be traced back to Metroid where save stations are the only way to find respite. The player does not have the liberty of deciding when their progress is saved 
only at the few and far between save stations can we rest easy. The settings in both the Souls games and the Metroid Prime games share some overlapping aspects as well. In every game, we're journeying through a fallen world where a once great kingdom has descended into ruin. And if we're watchful, we can find traces of lore telling about the golden age that we can no longer experience and we're fighting to restore what once was. The Prime games were also some of the first to dabble in giant boss fights. The typical tradition in games before this time was to focus on the fun and make a casual pastime. Gigantic bosses were not part of this. The Metroid Prime games ushered in a new era of boss fights. In these games, we fight bosses so big we can't even fit them all on the screen. Their hits do massive amounts of damage and we have to learn their patterns and use wit to overcome them. Now the bosses of the Souls games need no introduction. We know they're huge, we know they're tough, and we know that they're gonna kill us. Yet, no matter how troublesome they may be, nothing compares to the feeling of finally scraping that health bar to zero, and finally being able to progress in the game. See, that's the feeling I was chasing so much after I beat the Metroid Prime games. No other game I played after that time even remotely matched that, until I found Dark Souls. See, when we beat a boss in Metroid Prime, we're typically granted a new ability that allows us to go explore new areas in the game and open new colored doors. And it gives the player an overwhelming sense of exploration and freedom. But when we beat a boss in Dark Souls, we're granted a large amount of souls and maybe a key, but we're ultimately given the ability to face tougher enemies, which in turn allows us to explore new areas and progress through the game, giving that same sense of overwhelming freedom and organic exploration. The final thing I want to talk about today is the interconnectivity of the worlds of Metroid Prime and Dark Souls, with the most notable of the Prime trilogy being Metroid Prime 2. In Metroid Prime 2, the world is laid out in a sort of a circle, with numerous pads and elevators branching between the areas and all converging on the central hub, the Great Temple. Now the player is unaware of this on their journey, but as we go along, we'll find paths that take us from the lowest point in the journey all the way back to the beginning, creating a deep sense of relief and excitement. Dark Souls 1 also does this phenomenal. The time we first figure this out is on our way through the Undead Parish when we find that elevator that leads back to Firelink Shrine. It's always such a great moment when we finally get to use that elevator and it always feels amazing to new players when they figure it out for the first time and learn just how interwoven the world is. Both of these games make amazing use of this in the final acts of the game. Both in Dark Souls and Metroid Prime, we must journey to the outer corners of the world in order to gather keys or souls to bring back to the main hub and combine to gain access to the final area. Now, I know there's those that don't like the backtracking, but I think it's an amazing game choice because it allows the player in their evolved form to go back through all the old areas and find secrets and upgrades in the starting places that they missed on the first run. And once again, it's that progressive backtracking that makes the exploration so addictive. Now, there's many more ways in which we can see the inspiration for the Souls games through the Metroid Prime games, but these were just the ones that stuck out to me the most. As you guys can easily tell by the theme of my channel, I absolutely love both these games and they are by far the best experiences I've ever had in gaming. I really hope they continue to do what they've been doing and use these core forms in both Elden Ring and Metroid Prime 4. And let me just say, if you're a Metroid fan and you've never played the Souls games, I can't recommend it enough. Or conversely, if you're a Dark Souls fan and you've never played Metroid Prime, highly recommend it. Either way, you're gonna have something to love. Anyways guys, that's gonna pretty much do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on it and subscribe if you're not already and I'll catch you in the next one.